books of business and not calling it a bear market, just calling it a correction. So that's the, what we need to deal with. And everybody needs to make their own decision. It's also time horizon. If you think it goes up you know, 20, 30 X over the next five, six, 10, whatever your number is, well, then a 50% drawdown is just small noise on the chart. If you're trading for a three-month time horizon and it falls 50% on you, well, you've got it dead wrong because your time horizon is different. So I am looking to, um, to add more to my positions into this kind of market because I don't think anything's changed. Nothing's changed in the network adoption. Network slowed down a bit for the reasons we talked about before. So over time, we see the institutions coming. I'm talking to them every day. I launched a crypto funder funds. We've already put the first $100 million to work. That goes straight into the markets via the hedge funds. You know, that ongoing allocation of assets is, is happening. So it doesn't stop. So it trades sideways for a year. That's great. It tends to mean periods of suppressed volatility lead to hypervolatility. Periods of hypervolatility tend to lead to periods of suppressed volatility. And we've basically had a sideways market where volatility has been falling for since May. Mm. So that's how I think about it. In terms of the allocation of tokens, the answer is I don't know. Yeah. It's complicated. Um, you know, we had a big move in the layer ones, AVAX, Terra, and, um, and um, Solana. Usually chasing the previous theme is a way to lose money for the reasons you're, you said before, is you're not taking advantage of weakness. What you're mm -hmm. trying to do is follow the momentum in a market where people are just rotating. That's usually bad. You can add to momentum trades when the whole market's in momentum, not when it's rotating. So where could the rotation go? That's the question you should be asking. Well, some of these DeFi ones had a big run in 2020, haven't done anything and fallen 70%. Maybe it's DeFi. Maybe it's the interoperability, the ones that allow you to move things from one chain to another. They haven't had really had a big run. Maybe it's those. Metaverse have had a run. NFTs have had a run. Um, Layer ones have had a run. Ethereum's had a run. Bitcoin's had a run. So that's you need to be thinking, okay, what hasn't had the run yet? Yeah. And again, I wouldn't try and look for one particular single token because your probability of success, unless you really know it, is super low. Build a basket of stuff, equally weighted. Don't take too much risk. Wait and see. And I think this is why it's so important. All the content on our crypto channel is available for free once you register. Um, and then we've also created now pro crypto, the institutional. You can't just look at this as as one chart, right? It's getting more nuanced than that. You have to have more it, education, look, understanding around what's happening. Yeah, even an idiot like me could get Bitcoin and <laughs> Ethereum right. But now it's complicated, right? You need to know what you're doing. And you know, I, and that's why we did the uh, the um, crypto pro because. Even I would reaching out to the Delphi guys all the time, say, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Because it's beyond anybody's ability. Now, they're a big team of 70 odd people who just do this all day, look at different stuff. So yes, it is more complicated. Or the other way of solving for it is choosing one focus area that you become the expert on. That's the mm -hmm. other way. There's no way you'll be an expert in all of this. You might be okay with some broad asset allocations by using the kind of strategies that I'm talking about, but we're still a bit hit or miss. I mean, I, I don't really know. So that, you know, I'm, I'm guessing too. Yeah. I think the one thing though, is that clearly between whether we're talking about carbon or we're talking about some of the cryptocurrencies, there's a lot of opportunity. It feels volatile the start of this year, but it seems like there's a lot of opportunity to be had. I think there is. We talked about this on, on Macro Insider, the Real Vision Pro tier, Julian and I, is the opportunity maybe not be here now. The opportunity now in markets like this is to do your homework on what you actually want to do. So we talked about growth stocks. We talked about carbon that's been kind of chopping around a bit in the last few weeks. We've talked about that. We've talked about, is there an opportunity in the bond market on the long side? What am I looking for? What are my signals? What are the chart? When should I get in? Choppy markets are not the time to have high conviction. Fantastic stuff. So many good questions. We need to leave it there. Unfortunately, there's never enough time. But Ralph, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for watching. The Daily Briefing is observing the Martin Luther King holiday Monday, but Apple will be back Tuesday with Andreas Steno Larson. And as always, the conversation continues on the exchange. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yeah, have a great weekend and have a great weekend, Matt.